burning wood as a, as a so source of energy is, is a renewable energy. Um, we all know about solar power and we all know about wind power, but not many people realise that, that burning wood is actually renewable as well. So the carbon that's taken up by the trees when they're growing is what's released into the atmosphere when they're burned. So unlike coal or gas or oil, where you're releasing new carbon into the atmosphere that wasn't there before, this is carbon that's already been taken out is, and is being replaced back to the atmosphere. So it's sustainable, it's renewable, and it's, it's generally a green fuel. And are you talking about logs? Is it just logs? Or? No, no. There's logs, which we're all really familiar with. There's wood chip, which tends to be used in much larger industrial type systems. And there's also log, um, wood pellets. Um, and I've got some examples oh, yes, please, here. Yes. Um, obviously a traditional log, oh, yes, which we're yes. all very familiar okay. with. So that's quite seasoned, isn't it? That's, that's quite dry. That's very seasoned. Yes. And, and that's really important to burn in um, log, in open fires and also in stoves. If you burn wet wood, then you can have problems with tarring and, and charring. And, and it also burns less efficiently in your fire. So it's important to find a supplier that's got well-seasoned wood. Um, we've also, this is, this is a good example of some chip. Oh, can I have a bit? Yeah, there we go. So again, it's really important okay, to season so that the feels wood. Very dry. Very dry. So this is always less than 30% moisture content, okay. and it's very important to use a, a special chipper so you get properly sized chip, so that the boilers can can cope with the size of material that you're feeding in. And finally. Oh, dog these food. Are the <laughs> no, these are the wood pellets, um, and these are manufactured out of sawdust. So it's uh, quite an industrial process. They're compressed, um, and the, the lignin that's that's within the wood holds the pellets together. And, and these tend to be used in, in small stoves, in domestic stoves. And the beauty of them is that they pour very nicely and that they're very consistent. Um, so you can buy bags of these and they just pour into the top of the stoves and they're automatically fed in when the stoves run out of, of fuel. So very neat. Can I concentrate on, on logs for the moment? Certainly. So if somebody's bought their own woodland, they can presumably Cut, cut their own firewood. Are there any restrictions on that or they, how does that work? They must have a felling license um, whenever you're cutting more than um, three cubic metres <laughs> of, of wood they must have a felling license um, but as long as they've got that then they can go ahead and, and uh, produce their own firewood. Okay but for domestic use three cubic metres is quite a lot isn't it? So if it's just for your own use you can probably do it without if you're as part of your managing of a woodland you could probably do it without a felling license. Yes, yes. Um, and what about seasoning? How, how, do they, how do they go about doing that? Essentially, um, when you've cut it, keep it off the ground. So it's a good idea to lay a couple of logs along the ground and then lay the, the logs that you're drying on top of those. And they're called bearers. They keep the wood off the ground. Um, stack them up um, and then cover over the top with some tarpaulin so that the, the butts are still exposed to the, the air. Make sure that you've got them in a nice, well-aired area um, and leave them for somewhere around 12 to 18 months. Oh, a long time. Uh, quite a while, yeah, yes. to, to be able to make sure that they're, they're fully dry. Um, and then if you're still not quite sure, if you can get one of those moisture meters just to, to test one or two of the, the logs to make sure that they're below, say, 20% moisture before you put them in the fire.